right now we'd like to bring on a young man who believes in doing things his own way. And based on the way he kind of get next to all of the folks who've seen him work, his way has got to be pretty hip. So let's lay some noise. Welcome, fellow Bucks fans. This is Robert Green of Outside Leverage Podcast. Here talking Bucks, one of the greatest, most influential, most definitive fans of all time. Um, since I've known the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and since I've been a fan of the Bucks, I've always known the face of this man. The, the only, only Hall of Fame inductee as a fan. I got Big Nasty in the building. Talk to me, man. How you doing? Hey, man, I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. You know, that Ford Hall of Fans thing that's about to happen here at uh, hopefully in August, that induction is going to be pretty awesome. And uh, thanks for to the Ford company and uh, and for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to even acknowledge me. That That's, uh, that, that's a big win-win either way you look at it. No, absolutely, man. That's, uh, it, it is a big deal. That was, uh, I was so surprised that they actually – actually did a, a fan and fan inductee, which I thought is super cool. And the first thing I thought, I'm like, okay, that's it. I know exactly who is going to be in it for the Bucks. It's the, the one guy that everybody knows of. It, it was you. Like, again, since I've been a fan of the Bucks, I started back in 94. I've known your face. I've, I've known you and what you're doing. Like, t- can you tell me? I know you told the story probably a thousand times at this point. Can you just tell me how you got into the persona and how you got into the character of being Buck Nasty? Well, you know, you got to figure, you know, back in the Bucko Bruce days, um, you know, everybody wants to bring those colors back. But, you know, I was about eight years old when I first started liking the Bucks when they first came out. And, uh, you know, I just stuck with them. My buddies were Pittsburgh Steeler fans and Raider fans, and they were winning championships. And I was getting abused as a child back then. <laughs> but, uh, but I will tell you, you know, one thing it did teach me was team loyalty and uh, be loyal with your uh, team no matter what, whether you win, you lose, and uh, definitely uh, show your your enthusiasm towards the team, your love for the team, and uh, generate it with your family and your friends and just keep sharing those experiences. But, uh, you know, I guess you could say it's come full circle with this hall fans thing, uh, you know, to let you know, there are hall other hall of famers out there too. Um, in 2001 visa had the hall of fans. Uh, and I actually got inducted back in 2001 with visa in Canton. And, uh, actually it's kind of neat. This is my second time around being a hall of famer, uh, this time with Ford, but, the neat thing about this enshrinement is uh, it's a bronze permanent displayed plaque in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and it isn't just a marketing or anything like that where the exhibit can just go away. Uh, it's something that's permanent, and that's something I'm really excited about. And, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of other Buck fans that are well-deserving, too. I don't look like I'm above anybody else. I just believe we all, you know, cheer our Bucks side by side, and that's what it's about. Yeah, I'm glad you said that um, because you and I were just speaking just a few moments ago about, you know, his recent uproar about, you know, infighting. And you've seen a lot of, you've probably seen a lot of it over your 30-plus years of being a fan with the, uh, with the, the infighting and the, you know, bragging rights. This time it's kind of, for us right now, especially for me, this is one of the few times I've actually seen it to this level uh, with the infighting and so forth. And it's almost on the good side and almost and it's also in a bad area. Um and, and I kind of just want to get your quick take on it. Like you've seen it, like how would you rank it if you had to rank it, or if you, you know, if you had any thoughts on it, if it was bigger than anything else, or is it just another part of Phantom that everybody just need to get used to? You know, the crazy part of it is I've been a fan before these camera phones and these telephones <laughs> even had cameras. So uh, I can remember uh, CVS giving out cameras at the the stadium for a, a game day giveaway. <laughs> And I wanted to kill him because I didn't get out of there till like five hours after the game. It was crazy <laughs> when you actually had to go to the Walgreens to get them printed up or a CVS like the, the camera that was made. So, uh, no, I think, honestly, social media has definitely uh, been a huge part of, I hate to say it, divide. Yeah, it gets you the information out there quick, sometimes true, sometimes false. 
But, uh, you know, everybody's looking to get Buccaneer info. Everybody is. I mean, I love it when I see stuff. I just, when I see it announced, I go, okay, is it really happening? Like, perfect example is, you know, the GOAT coming to town. I was, you know, I was all the way to the end thinking, okay, it's a negotiation tactic uh, to get Jameis, you know, a lesser on a lesser contract, which only benefits the team anyway because uh, you could sign others uh, free agents and um, and obviously get everybody under contract for the long haul. Um, mm-hmm. But this divide, and, and you said that this divide, uh, I, I get it's got to come down to this. I mean. You know, you say I'm the the face. You mentioned that being the face. Well, if I've been around so dang long and I don't look like I'm above anybody else, nobody else should be either. Because what it's all comes down to is the twelfth man coming together. This is pro football. This is Buccaneer football. What we're all supposed to do is go and show up at the stadium if you can financially. I know it's not affordable for everybody, but you know what? You can still cheer them at home. You can still wear your colors during the the week. You know, you could also uh, wear your colors and your team pride no matter where you're at. And the neat thing about social media is, yeah, you see it countrywide now. I, let me take that back. Worldwide. Worldwide, uh, yeah. And I could tell you, back in the day, <laughs> being the only face painter back then and people wore bags over their heads, I'd never seen that come. And I was just praying, hey, man, one day we'll have it like the black hole and, and we'll have fans all painted up. And, 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 and lo and behold, we're still not at that level uh, of uh, what I call the, um, the face painters, war paint, whatever you want to say. Not, you don't have to be a face painter to be a, a nutcase fan. You know, all you got to do is grab a ticket, sell that place out and be loud. Be the twelfth man advantage. You know, I hear this thing like you said, uh, which blew my mind. I even did a post on it. I thought it was so ridiculous. Um, oh, they're just jumping on the bandwagon because they're Tom Brady fans, or oh, uh, you know, oh now they're jumping on and they're not Jameis fans, or you know, let me put in plain words. I'm a close friend of Jameis Winston. I'm those close friends of Tony Dungy. I've seen raw deals where people have actually left the team and it hasn't felt very good. And neither one of those cases have felt good for either one of those people. And But here's the deal. I'm a Buck fan, a Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan. I'm team first, players second, because players do come and go. The team never goes. And I'll tell you what, the only way the team leaves is if you don't support the team. And that's what it's about. And I don't care if you've been a fan for an hour. You put these (laughs) buck colors on, come on out. Because if you're a season ticket holder, you know what it's been like the last several years of seeing opposing fans come into our stadium. And I'm sorry, literally take over the stadium because either we're having a bad performance. But what's terrible is, you know, you're hearing them. we're, We're at third and 15. And you're hearing that opposing team screaming in your own stadium. That's yeah. flat out embarrassing. Uh, you know, but I got to tell you, I've been here long enough. That's the way it was when we were in the Norris division, when the Packers came to town, when the Bears came to town, when the Lions came to town. It was always like that. There was always about 45,000 season ticket holders strong. Okay. But now I'm 52. I was the young kid back in the day. Now I'm an old guy. Right. These people are passing away. That 45,000 is probably more closer to 40 now, Mm -hmm. maybe even less than that. So I don't care. Jump on the bandwagon. The only thing I ask of you and one of the things that I look at that you want respect from Buck fans. Once you jump on the ship, you can't jump off the ship. Yeah. So don't jump. Don't be a jump ship chump. You stick with the team, whether they win or lose. Don't be a front runner because there's a lot of people that are front runners out there. But let's talk about the New England Patriots and all those mm-hmm. fans there. Well, guess what? They weren't always front runners. They were horrible back in the day. Right. I don't know if you remember, you know, the Bears killing them. An embarrassment Super Bowl. Okay. And that's them getting to a Super Bowl. You know, so yeah, they've created a dynasty over there. But you know what? Time's catching up. Yeah. And yeah, we got the goat in town and you know, I think the Buck organization is looking at, you know, unfortunately, 
the turnovers, you know, whether they're James's fault or not, it's still a team game, right? Yeah. If you're turning over the ball, you're going to lose the game. I mean, you can't go four turnovers in a game and expect to win. It's very highly unlikely in the NFL. And especially with, I don't care if you're talking the worst team in the NFL to the best team in the NFL. When you lose the turnover battle, you, you lose. normally lose the game. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, when I look at this, I just, you know, I just hate when people start giving themselves names like Winstonites and, and, and have to <laughs> label people or Brady bunches. You know, my ha- my thing is, is like, hey, you know, you know, Raider Nation has Raider Nation, right? You know, a buck nation is the only way I can look at it where I say, hey, everybody's together. You know, that's a buck fan. I mean, why don't we all just get along? <laughs> Who has to be better than the next one? I mean, now look at it. Yeah. You have multiple. I, I, dude, I'm telling you, my Facebook thing gets crazy. I get an invite almost every day of another Buccaneer um, Facebook group. Mm-hmm. And, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. You know, some last, some don't, but some of them bicker about the stupidest things. And it's almost like we all want the same thing. Mm-hmm. We want to win. Right. You know what? You don't always get the win. If it was that easy, everybody would win the Super Bowl, right? right. Exactly. I mean, for God's sakes, look at the Cleveland Browns, and we're sitting here. We They know what we feel like. You know, I could actually look at them and go, hey, they've experienced losing, mm-hmm. but at least we got a trophy. You know, yeah. uh, so I don't know, man. I just look at it. This divide. Uh, I'm not for divide. I, I think it's ridiculous. I think we all should just get along, love our bucks. And who the hell cares if they've been a buck fan for a day or a buck fan for 50 years, you know, before organization even started. It doesn't give you any more clout than the next guy. Yeah. So bottom line is just get there and. Do me a favor. Don't be a golf clapper. Get loud at the stadium. Mm-hmm. Let's all become the 12th man, and let's give our team a little bit of a an advantage. That would be beautiful. That's what it's about. Yeah, and I'm with you, man, because I've, I've been a season ticket holder now since basically 2006. I've been a season ticket holder since 2006, and now when I got on the list, uh, it was like a 10-year waiting list at that point when I got mm-hmm. on. So I was – I was crazy. I lost my mind when I finally – but I didn't get to it my first game, though, the 2009. Josh yeah. Freeman and all those guys, when they got on, and Jerry McCormick, those cats came in. So I didn't get in until then, like my very first game. So, no, I, I've seen it completely quiet. I've been in an area where all black jerseys, all New Orleans Saints, who that mm-hmm. shanting people out of the building, like, it, and it's been bad. I've been – just like you, set through the whole – you know, the winless home season. We went 0-8 at home. Mm-hmm. Damn near brought me into tears, man. I didn't <laughs> I was just like, what am I what is happening? But I kept coming back because I'm a fan of the team. Exactly. And it's funny because like we went to London. I remember selling a lot of memorabilia and my golf cart and everything to gather cash enough to go to London because I figured once in a lifetime bucket list for me and my family. We had a blast. Mm-hmm. But here's a perfect example. We were in London. You were the home team, and we weren't the home team. It wasn't the there home were more team. Panther fans than there were Buck fans, and it was loud. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm not saying that Buck fans didn't show up because we got a nice little group over there at the UK that uh, know how to represent the Bucks, but also the hometown group. I mean, you. I, I was really surprised how many people make the uh, the effort to go across the pond. And uh, let me, and then I'll tell you, it was strange over there too, man. They had a lot of, uh, um, I guess, boycotting and stuff like that going on. Really? I swear to God, I thought it was the purge for one minute, man. People were walking around in red. <laughs> I was freaking out, to be honest with you. But as soon as you had a couple Guinnesses, I was good. <laughs> you, remember, you remember what the? Uh, do you remember what what the uh, what the whole uproar was about? The whole all that pr- protesting, whatever it was. It actually, from what I understood, because even you know me, I'm like I don't care. I'm I'm originally from New Jersey. We walk anywhere we want to go, right? Yeah. And I end up walking through the experience, and what it was is it was about you know like um, saving the earth, you oh. know, uh, environmental, and uh, and and I gotta be honest with you, I didn't see any um, nothing violent whatsoever. Um, now there might have been you know things, but they actually had had it right in front of the uh, the bar headquarters for the Buccaneers. It was it was crazy. It was really crazy. Wow. Um, but 
Uh, but it was still was an experience to go to a, a different country and, and uh, we had an awesome time. I mean, it was really neat to see the Bucks represented, you know, over there in UK so much. I was really, really impressed. Met some real quality Buck fans. And you know what? They don't go there and they, they pound their chest, say, hey, my group's better than your group. They just love their Bucks over there, man. And it's just nice to see it, you know, worldwide now. You know, that's yeah. what it's all about, man. Coming together worldwide and, uh, and enjoying Buck Nation together. Yeah, but going back, I mean, it, it's, it's exactly what you said, though, is because there, a lot of people just want to be seen. They want to be, you know, peacocks. They just want to be, they want to be seen. They want to be known for what it is that they think or, or whatever. And it doesn't matter. And a lot of times uh, I actually spoke to uh, Thomas Bassinger. I spoke to Thomas Bassinger of the Tampa Bay Times uh, a couple nights ago. And I talked to him, mm-hmm. you know, and we were talking about, you know, it's, there are a lot of uh, groups of fans and, and, you know, and a lot of media blogs and fan blogs and fan driven sites like that. So you do, we have, we do have a lot of, a lot of info, a lot of opinions that come out and, and they get passed over as facts. So that's kind yeah. of a thing that, uh, I mean, and it's also a good thing because I like getting stuff as a, from a fan perspective. I like getting stuff from a fan perspective. I like, cause I do it myself. I write for, um, for what the buck dot net one original mm-hmm. one originals podcasts as well as the blogs and now and I started writing for them and I started doing my own thing too but you start seeing people pushing a bunch of narratives that they that they want and a lot of wish lists that they want and stuff like that and it, and it kind of it kind of muddied the waters for a lot of fans and other fans didn't know what they were buying into or how to buy into it like mm-hmm. and, and again you start seeing all these groups popping up and all these things happening and and what you got is what we have now it can be used for good but a lot of mm-hmm. times it's not, you know? You know, one of the things I always look at it is uh, journalism is about facts, right? Mm-hmm. It's about coming together and facts, putting the things out there, what is actually true. Unfortunately, with the social media, it's whoever gets it out first, whether it's correct or not. And, it, you know, that kind of hurts things, man. That could hurt people, That could, in which I'm not a big fan of. I mean, some of these things, I mean, you, you get a literally, I remember Jameis went to the doctor And uh, because, you know, he had the knee surgery and had a a brace over his thing. And right away, that picture got posted on Facebook and people ran wild with it. And then guess what else? You know, the press got a hold of it. You know, don't get me wrong. Podcasts and everything like that is great because what you're appreciating is that person's opinion, that person's opinion and what they're forecasting uh, and what they would love to see the Bucks do. You know, so, hey, I'm all for that. I actually read some of them, you know, and I'll go through it and I'm like, OK, yeah, that's that would be awesome if it happened. Yeah. But, you know, that's you know, that's like a wish list. And and there's nothing wrong with, you know, having faith and having a wish list. The things I don't like is when they do false stuff, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, whether it's a false claim on a player and then you find out later down the road after he's been crucified that you find out none of that was even true yeah. or there was another story behind it. That that's the stuff where I just don't think it's right. And that's where social media, uh, kind of goes crazy. Uh, perfect example is what the heck are we watching that, um, uh, tiger King or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you, you know, I got to watch it and here's a crazy thing. I, one of my clients is big cat rescue and, um, and Carol and Howard Baskin, or my clients, and I can tell you right now, that that video or whatever you want to call it, that Netflix crucified them people. And I'm telling you right now, you've never met two of the more nicest people in your entire life. And I'm telling you, I've been through Big Cat Rescue. I went through that whole place, dude. It's amazing, yeah. and you get educated. And you know where they did that that where the whole crowd was there. It's not like that. I can tell you right now, I had a family of six that went through that entire thing on a private tour. And there's a just a perfect example of how things could be drawn out. And then it's public perception where they're literally worried about, I mean, how horrible uh, that she she grinded up her, her hu- ex-husband and that's a disappearance. That's how the mind plays tricks on people where you do these hypothetical crap and it just goes off on things. Guess what? That can happen to you. That can happen to me. That can happen to anybody. And the thing is, where's your real defense? Mm. What do you do? 
Yeah. Right. That's the unfortunate thing. Why I don't like, I, I just look at it and, you know, I know them and I just go, you know what? And you see these posts that these people don't even have a clue, Well, what are they doing? They're going on their hypothetical, right? Yeah. And they're using social media to do whatever they want, you know, and let's face it, you've seen some very distasteful stuff and don't get me wrong. I, I, I looked at the, I, we watched the whole thing and I was, cause I wanted to know obviously. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I couldn't believe it. I was actually ch- chuckled that <laughs> that people can actually be that way. I, I was like, and what I mean by that is that Tiger King guy. And then, geez, I mean, everybody's got their own opinions. I, I'm just old school. Um, but uh, I was, I mean, I, I just can't believe those people weren't locked up a long time ago. It, it just blows my mind. They got to wait until, you know, somebody's getting, Given fear for their life, but could you imagine? Could you imagine having death threats and having to be on your property, worried about somebody coming to your house and shooting you or killing you? Or uh, I don't know about you. I mean, I know I have guns at our house, but I wouldn't have to be, have to worry about getting a gun every single day to protect myself. Yeah. You know, it's it's just scary, and then that's all public perception, every bit of it. So uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, what? yeah, we get off on that stuff. <laughs> no. That's what social media is all about. And people are drawn. And especially now with this, you know, this coronavirus, everybody's stuck at home. Everybody's just looking for something to look at. They're, they're probably watching me right now. They're going, oh, my God, Big Nasty's on the video. Let's, let's watch it. Hey, the whole deal is people want to they want they want content. They want the buck. And let me tell you something. You're going to get it with me because with the bucks, am I excited about the goat coming to town? Absolutely. That would be the only one I would get excited about. Otherwise, I'd be like, OK, at least they didn't go and say, OK, we're we're backing up to, a, you know, a, a bridge war, you know, or, you know, or going with somebody that was at the top of the list. Mm-hmm. Um, even though uh, Jameis was third, apparently, um, I just hope it don't come to bite us in the butt because that kid. I'm telling you, man, if he could stay under the same system at least three years in a row, um, I, I just wish we can get him to come back because you got two years here under Brady, right? You know you're going to learn something from the GOAT. You know, you're not signing anywhere else. You know, yeah. I would love for you to come back. I know it hurts. I mean, here you are the starter. If anything, you know, Jameis's heart to win. I mean, if I was him, think about it. Broken hand. Broken hand, the knee problem, and he still played the last three games. Well, guys, I don't mean to sound bad here, but these wide receivers came from the garbage heap. I mean, we do. You tell me where these wide receivers came from. I've never even heard of them, and they weren't <laughs> right routes. So, so I mean, I was just surprised that Perryman had such a great, great uh, few games there. I was like, at least he had somebody that was coherent that can actually run a route that's called, but. You know, on the other hand, maybe he should have just said, here you go, Ryan. Why don't you go ahead and play the game and uh, I'll I'll bench it, you know. But, you know, the the thing is you can't take away from a Tiger's heart. And that guy's got heart, man. He wants to be the best. And that's part of the issue. (laughs) He's going to be good somewhere else. There's no doubt about it. I've seen seen the Steve Craig's. I've seen the Doug Williams's. Believe me. He's going to be good somewhere else. So I wish him the best. I pray to God he would come back. But, you know, Buck Nation and the Winstonites or whatever you want to call them, hey, man, it ain't about that. It's about the team. You stick about with the team no matter what. Hey, if you got to leave, I totally get it. You know, go to where, you know, am I going to be a Jameis Reuter? Oh, absolutely. But if he plays the Bucks, hell no, I'm not. He knows that. <laughs> You know, Gerald McCoy, perfect example. Me and GMC were really tight, still are tight. But I'll tell you right now, when he was playing us in Carolina, I was booing him. He knew that. that's just part of the game. Right. You know, that's we're we're not there to shake hands during the game. We're supposed to get loud and 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 make a difference, you know, and help our team. And when he's on the opposing team, I'm not going to vote for him. I'm not going to push him. You know, I'm not going to, you know, I will shake his hand. I'll give him a hug because at the end of the game, because he's a great person, you mm-hmm. know, but, but you got to root your bucks forever, man. That's what it's about. It ain't about an individual on the team. It's about the team in general. Yeah. And I'm 100% with you on, on being a fan of the team instead of 
a player. It, it, I mean, and you've seen a lot of good players come and go. Mm-hmm. Through 30 years, I've seen a lot of good players come and go. And I know we I, we do we do differ on um on like some of the quarterbacks or not well just Doug Williams possibly and, and a couple others. So a couple of them went on and they've had success or they've been on Super Bowl winning teams or they've been on playoff teams, but they weren't, you know, always a completely different quarterback than what they were here in Tampa. They didn't, you know, evolve. Steve Young is the one that stands out to me. Of course, I think we mm-hmm. gave up on Steve Young after two years. It was right. crazy. That was back in the times when people used to draft two or three quarterbacks in the same draft, and then they pick yeah. one and throw the other one away. Um, but you know, you do. And we were under Culver House, so you know, not the best of ownerships. But hey, he's still our owner. Still love the Bucks back then. I still backed them. Then Glazier came in, and I'll tell you right now, Malcolm was great before Malcolm passed away. Uh, oh my God! I mean, how many owners? would walk up 64 rows up in Tampa Stadium in the beat of heat August and shake hands with the fans. He wouldn't take the elevator up. I don't know if you remember the old Tampa Stadium. They had an elevator, and it went up to the press box. He walked it. And I don't know if you remember, (laughs) they had that loop thing where you had to walk it. That poor man walked it every single time, and I just thought that was the coolest thing. And, uh, you know, and his his family's doing a good job too, man. I, I tell you. When you're paying two coaching staffs in the NFL to make your team better and to find those diamonds in the rough, uh, you can't say they're being cheap, guys. You know, they're definitely putting whatever it takes to bring another championship to Tampa. Uh, Otherwise, do you really think you'd see uh, Tom Brady coming to town? Right. And and I'm not a part of that whole group that, uh, you know, that kind of down talk the owners so much because I wasn't around. I think that's more of a, to me, I think that's a local group that normally does that, that has that strong criticism of the owners and so forth. I never really had that. I, I mean, I'm a, I'm from Northeast Mississippi. I moved down here. I, well, I was a Bucks fan before I ever thought about moving to Florida. I ended up in Florida in 99. I'm sorry, in 2001. So I, I, I never had that whole, you know, the owners of this and that. And I know people who are longer fans than I am and much, you know, bigger historians as far as the Bucks are yourself probably included. I never had that kind of that kind of take on the team like that as far as the owners. Yeah, I think uh the coolest thing, you know, it's wow. You you just definitely labeled me a historian. Hey, oh, you know, you're where's around. my cane? Where's my cane? But you know what? <laughs> I think it's our jobs. And and I literally look at it as our jobs to try to educate the younger. Um because it is pretty fascinating to see what the Buccaneer, because I don't care what you say. I mean, don't get me wrong. I put the Cleveland Brown fans up there for loyalty, but if you've been a Buck fan since they've been here, there that's that's um you're like that's like the loyalty god because I mean the things that they went through and the teams that you went through. I mean, everybody knows I love Warren Sapp and I wear his number ninety nine, right? Yeah. And everybody's heard of John Lynch mob and the hardest hitter in the NFL and you know, golly, he's going to keep getting robbed for the Hall of Fame. And, Uh, you know, but I could tell you, there was a John Lynch back in the day called Mark Cotney. Mark Cotney was nicknamed Captain Crunch, number 33, defensive back, strong safety. And when I was a kid, I ended up going to these little football camps that, you know, my mom and dad, blue collar workers, I mean, $250 back when I was eight years old is a crap load of money. And, uh, I remember uh, them saving and pinching to get me and my brother to go. And uh, I, that's where I think the team loyalty comes from is you meet those players. And back then, those players stayed with the team for a long time. Yeah. It wasn't like now where you have free agency and they come and go. You know, I mean, the, it's very, very highly unlikely that you see – you know, a Derek Brooks, you just don't see that anymore. Um, perfect example is Tom Brady, right? Yeah. He, he's come to Tampa, but I think me as a child and getting the experience and meeting those players and actually literally having them coach, I got to Doug Williams coached Leroy Selman, um, Tony Davis, Scott Brantley mm-hmm. talk about laying a lick. Uh, and then, um, uh, yeah, it was it, it, Mark Cotney was the 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 best coach I think I've ever had, man. He he gave me the um, the keep working mentality, and I was never the most talented football player in the world, but 
I will outwork you. And uh, that's one thing I do to this day. I'll outwork you in business as well. That's just that's just <laughs> the, the things that I learned. You know, I might not be the most talented and I might not know everything, but the things I don't know, I will work hard to find out. And I will always have the best interest in anything in a positive way. And I guess that's where we get back to the social media. Um, it's not always positive, you know, and it's easy to kick a dog when he's down. Right. And uh, but I'll tell you right now, and I think that's why Buck fans kind of get a little pissy, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. when you get these new guys that want to jump on the bandwagon, they haven't experienced the losing. Well, Guys, let me tell you something. When Tampa Stadium, and I still call it Tampa Stadium, um, when that place is rocking and you're hugging people that you don't even know right next to you and uh, you're winning together, you're not part of the game. You, ain't, you didn't make no tackle. You didn't make no catch. All you did was cheer together and loud as you can be. And you know what? If we get a tip pass and it picks off or or they get an offsides penalty because we're so loud, that that's like our way of saying, hey, that's what it's about. That's our participation to the game. So if we can uh, actually fill, fill uh, Tampa Stadium back up again, uh, it would be amazing. And I, and I guarantee you, you aren't going to worry about if that fan over there has been a fan for a day um, when you're winning. It's the best thing in the world, boy. It's better than apple pie with ice cream on top. I'm telling you, man. Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, a couple a week or so ago, I had Derek Fournier of What the Buck. He joined me and Chris Fisher and those guys, and we were talking about you know the same thing. And uh, again, that feeling of just being in the state, and whether it's full or not, whether it's full or not, when you got all the home team, when they oh, all right. all yelling and cheering at the same time, man, you can drown out who the hell ever. And and, yeah. and and one to, again, the prime example I kept thinking about when when we had the uh, a couple of years ago, we I guess it was St. Louis, when we had the rain delay, like an hour oh, and a yeah. half rain delay, and then we came out, man, and we got we even though we lost the game, when we got down to the other end of the field, and we was fifteen yards away from putting it in, man, it was so damn loud, it was like okay, holy crap, like we completely drowned out the rest of the Rams fans that were there. It it just it's in yeah, that was a lot of fun too, and I remember a lot of people jumping ship, leaving early. But uh, but that's here or there too, because I remember getting on the 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 old Facebook flipping out because I was so bad uh, because I couldn't believe when I came. You know, I never left. Yeah. <laughs> I'll stay there until it could be snowing in Florida. I ain't leaving. You know, I, I make sure my bladder's emptied after the game. But uh, but I could tell you, uh, you know, it, it is a great experience to win. And it's even better to win with you have, have uh, what I call uh, Buck fans together. I mean, it's amazing. And literally, it actually becomes emotional. It's And I think that's what it is. It, there's emotion that's involved. There's uh, love for the team. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're going, well, wait a minute. You've been a fan for a day. How can you have love for a team? Let me tell you something. You don't think that person's just as happy as you are? I mean, now we got to start grading people's happiness. Yeah. Come on, J yeah. just just fill the stadium up. And and what kills you is you're right. I, you know, I'm learning more on this Facebook stuff and this Twitter. Uh, Michael Clayton says it better. He calls Twitter trolls. Uh, Twitter trolls. They they try to get you all worked up and and try to start stuff. You know what? I learned something in Facebook. If you don't like what you see, delete it. Easy, or uh, easy hit thing the to hide. Do. Button. You hit the hide button. Because let's face it, you, not everybody's going to agree on everything. Some people are going to look at me and go, oh, big nasty, you're the nicest guy in the world. You get along with everybody. No, I don't get along with everybody. Uh, not everybody agrees with what I say and how I, I view things. It's just this is the way I view it. This is the way if you're asking for a Buck fan that's been around a long time, uh, I just think that we're all equal. We all cheer side by side. And if any of you think any different or you're above anybody else, then you need to, you need to check yourself. And, uh, and that's what I, when I see the divide and about, Oh, they're new. What's your season ticket holder? You know, half of them, you know, if you can't afford a ticket, I get it. I completely understand it. But when I see the stadium empty and I see the cheap seats, 
still available? I, I go, well, not everybody cannot afford to go to the games. Um, you choose if you really wanted to go to games. And, uh, and the things, the people that can't afford it, I guarantee you they're watching it on TV. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's so hot sometimes. I wish I was sitting in the pool watching my TV behind me watching the game. Hell yeah. But I don't know, man. I, I'm going to do it till the day I die. And I enjoy going to the games with my daughter and doing the nasty fur days and, you know, raising money for charity to, and, and giving them a game day experience with Big Nasty. Hey, it's my way of making a difference. And, you know, it doesn't mean you got to do it. Just you can help an old lady across the street to be a good person. Um, and there's no level of making anybody any different that I'm above anybody else or they're above anybody else. Hey, man, we all put their, our pants on the same way. <laughs> and, and, and if you don't, you need to check yourself, you know. <laughs> um, so, uh, but all in all, man, the, the whole idea is staying loyal, staying, uh, staying to the true love, what it's all about. And that's the love for the Bucks, man. Last I knew, no, we were all cheering for this emblem. And, ho- you know, it might even change coming up here with the new unis coming yeah. up. But, uh, you know, that's what we're about. We're not about individuals. We're about a team. And last I seen team, there ain't no I in team. So, so that that's just what I'm all about, man. Yeah, and I you know I greatly appreciate. It. Again, that's exactly why I wanted to have you on. Again, you and I have different opinions. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, different opinions and different preferences for a couple of things that we've spoken about. But it's fine. It's cool to have a different opinion. If you can get it across and still, in, at the end of the day, you're still cheering for the Bucks and you still want the Bucks to win. I mean, we, I know people, again, who honestly have already said they're coming across because they're fans of Tom Brady. I'm like, great, Tom Brady plays for the Bucks. We got something in common. We both want to see Tom Brady win for this short period of time or however, however long it may be. I mean, we, we still just want to see that happen. Um, but again, I want to quickly get your opinion, not quickly, but I want to get your opinion on Tom Brady. You said if it wasn't for Tom Brady, greatest of all time, if it wasn't him coming to the Bucks, you'd feel a little bit different about uh, former starting oh, yeah. quarterback. It'd be completely different for you. What do you Absolutely. see? What do you see from Tom Brady that make you can give you, okay, the thumbs up? You're like, okay, this is what I think he can do, and this is what I think he can make as far as the team, as far as them being better. What do you think he can bring? Sorry about that. Motorcycle going by. Hey, um, I will tell you this. This is what I see. I see uh, a six-time world champion. I see a guy that's uh, when, and I'll be honest with you, I wasn't a big fan of him until I watched the Atlanta game uh, in the Super Bowl, and I went, I, I was still thinking, you know, Peyton was a stud back then, and, you know, I, I had other uh, of the best of all time thinking Joe Montana and stuff like that, but Same what man. I saw – um, what I saw in that game was greatness, and I, we'll probably never see that again. I, I hope and pray that he gets a seventh Super Bowl ring with us. Um, do I expect that this year? Like a lot of people are. Come on, man. You, you got to build chemistry again. You got to, you know, I know these guys are going to be hungry. I think our defense is going to be much improved. I think, you know, you still got to divide – to develop that chemistry, um, you know, which, you know, Jameis had with the Mike Evans and the Godwins and, and the Cameron Brates, you know, but one thing I know is when you bring somebody new to the plate that actually can make a difference and has the experience of winning, never a losing season, man. Holy moly, never a losing season. That's crazy. So you got that guy coming in with the experience I mean, you cut down turnovers, and again, that right there, guys, if we cut down our turnovers last year, we're a playoff team. Nobody can deny that. We're a playoff team. You also can't deny that Jameis kept us in a lot of games. Yeah, we can go and we can say, okay, the offensive line isn't as good, and he's going to get his back broken and and all that, but what it comes down to is you don't have a clue what's going to (laughs) happen until they take the snaps. So – Let's see what the guy does. I hope and pray we do a great job. The reason why I'm excited, when you have the greatest of all time that still has a live arm, he ain't coming off an injury. He isn't coming off a, you know, an ACL injury. He's not coming off of anything hurt. This guy keeps his, I mean, I don't know, me, 
I like to eat pizza, drink beers, and you know, you ain't gonna catch me eat vitamins and all that good stuff, even <laughs> though I should. But in, in a nutshell, this guy's kept great shape of himself. That's why he's in the league so much. Mm-hmm. He's selling. He's telling you, I got two years and I want out. He signed a, a very, uh, what I call, unbelievable contract with us, which is also incentive based. So it ain't like he's just coming here to. Uh, oh, I'm coming to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to sit by a palm tree. He's coming to Tampa Bay. He He's liking what he sees. I'm actually kind of excited to see his decision-making. How's that sound? His decision-making is pretty awesome. I, I think that comes undeniable, okay? I think with if Jameis would have been here and he could have been under this uh, tutorage, and coaching staff for a couple of years, I think it could have been a lot better. I really believe that. I don't think he's going to ever throw 30 picks plus again. That I don't think that'll ever happen. But that being said, it's a business size of the uh, Bucks. How long did Coach sign a contract for? Uh, right? Yeah. He was, yeah. All right? Five, yeah. So Coach signed a contract. You got Jason Light to put his whole – all of it on the line with coach, which I believe coach is, is the answer. I really do. And you can't say he ha- didn't have the best of the best around Jameis to make him better, you know? So, and I won't blame that season on Jameis completely. I, I still think Jameis is going to be one of the greatest quarterbacks that, that come around. I, I already been on here telling you, I think it's going to be regrettable later down the road. We're going to go, well, Damn it, we shouldn't have let him go. But what do you do as a business? I mean, you you can't keep throwing turnovers because, let's face it, last I seen, the stadium has been empty. Okay? Yeah. And, and if you look at it as a business scenario, you I, I don't care. You got – guys, the phone was ringing off the hook for season tickets as soon as Tom Brady was signed. Uh, what else can you say? That's what business is about. So now, don't get me wrong. You want to see the Tampa Bay Buck fans lose it on Tom Brady? Let him crap the bed, even including me. Um, but hey. he ain't gonna crap. What are the chances of him crapping the bed? I don't see that happening. This guy's already asking for phone numbers for the teams, you know, during his coronavirus to get to know these guys. I mean, Chris Godwin's been on Twitter and already said to everybody that he's contacted them several times already. I mean, that's one player. I mean, so I, I do think uh, with the GOAT, I think uh, we're going to get more. This may sound crazy. Not the 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 huge plays, the, the plays that Jameis would thread the needle and you go, oh, my God, that's greatness. I think what you're going to see is consistency. Consistency of completing the, the pass, doing the check down, and reducing the turnovers, which, guys, if the defense plays like they did last year and the guys come up with the wide receivers, nobody gets hurt, which we still need a third, by the way. I'm a little nervous. Um, if we can stay healthy, you know, guys, you know, the, there's – geez, man, look at every, all the NFL talking, and I know that's all hype. They're talking us going all the way to 10th best in the NFL, and we ain't even played a game yet. That's what the Tom Brady's do. The Tom Brady's that come to your place, turn your team overnight. I mean, you got you got the players coming out and talking to Casey Phillips, uh, which I love watching her. She's oh, awesome. I love her as well. And, and oh, she's unbelievable. And, and she gets she gets the guy's perspective. And I don't know about you, but I don't see any fake in that body language. I see these guys like holy moly. I mean, Mike Evans is so tight to Jameis. They're great buddies. And even he's excited about it. I mean, you know, you could also go back and here's what the social media do. What do you expect him to say? He works for the Buccaneer organization. But you know what? Guess what? He starts getting completions and they start winning games. Uh, It doesn't matter. It's all about winning the games, reducing the turnover battle. And let's face it, uh, coach isn't just sitting here to to, to not make the playoffs. This guy is going to say – I'm going to win a championship, and I'm going to ride off in the sunset. That's exactly what he's looking at to do. Um, do I think we have it this year? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I'll I just 
watch and see, and hopefully make the playoffs. Because once you make the tournament, it's anybody's game, right. you know. So um, nobody expected us to even go up to Philly and beat Philly, and look what happened. So you know, with our past history, so you got to play the game, you got to stay healthy. And one thing I did listen to Tom Brady uh, and his press conference was he was saying, you know, it's not just about the quarterback. It's about everything clicking in the right direction. It's the offense. It's the defense. It's the special teams. It's all the players, you know, that that see everything on the same level. You know, when you have Super Bowl champions on your team, they know how to guide the guys that never been to a playoff game. Mike Evans is one of the best wide receivers we have on our team. He's never been to a playoff game. Yeah, think about that. Yeah, I mean, you did. I did the same thing with Jerry McCoy. I thought Jerry McCoy was one of those cats. I'm like, and again, I know a lot of people have a lot of mixed feelings. I don't really care about people's feelings, but you know, he was one of those cats who like you just really wanted to see him make the playoffs. Same, and he's saying the same thing now about Levante Davis. Like, yo, this cat's been underrated, been overlooked. And he's so damn good. And he, I mean, I think a lot of the guys on the team are, are good enough to be making the playoffs. Yeah. And, you know, when you talk about, man, Levante, there's a guy that doesn't complain, just puts his hat on, comes out, plays his heart out yeah. every single game and produces. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I think he's one of the best linebackers the Bucks have ever had. And I mean that. With his longevity and his production, uh, it's amazing, and his leadership too. I mean, it, 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 and that and that's crazy. You got leadership teaching players that never even been in the playoffs. Yeah. But mark my words now, playing at that level, Levante David will be a Pro Bowler this year, first teamer, no doubt in my mind. Because now you got the Kukleys retired, and I, I still don't see how they saw Kukley being in front of Levante uh, last year, um, but. You know, that goes to that Pro Bowl crap, right? Yeah. I hate I'm that. not, you know, I'm not interested in a Pro Bowl, man. I, I, I just, I'm sorry. I just, it ain't like it was when it was Hawaii, uh, you know, where the players actually went and laid the wood and, and played. Now you got touch football. Right. I like the all pro. I like seeing what, you know, everybody votes in the all pro more than the Pro Bowl now. Um, you know, it's almost like I remember Ronde Barber. Hell with the Pro Bowl, I'm going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'll never. And he's right. He, huh. you know, that is the Grand Poobah Parade, right. winning the Super Bowl. So, but man, can you imagine? You know, we come out and it's October, and we're in the mix of it, and we got to win the last two games to get into the damn playoffs. Do you know how crazy it's going to be? And then you win the, then you win the one, and you go, oh my god, we win this and we're in. Can you imagine saying we win and we're in and we control our own destiny? I don't know about you. And having a home game, whoo, I'll be – y'all might have to give – I might have to bring a you, – y'all might have to uh, give me mouth to mouth because I might have a heart attack that night. I'm telling you right now because I'm so jacked and, and I'm excited because, you know, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over and expect a, a, a different result. You got you got to change things up. And I and let's face it, I, I think the Bucks were even shocked they got Tom Brady. I really do. I, I, I think they went and they tried. They didn't think it was going to be available. And then when they found that crack in the armor, and you can't go and say they overpaid him. No. It, it wasn't like, I mean, no. I, I uh, you know, I don't know what deal they offer Jameis. I, you know, we don't know that. I just remember, you know, I just hope Jameis's agent did it, did him right because, and I have no clue if he did or not, but I remember a guy named Eric Rett mm-hmm. and Eric Rett had an agent that asked for the moon. Okay. And he got screwed. The Bucks didn't sign him. He ended up not playing. He ended up going as a backup. And I think he ended up playing for the Ravens. Uh, back in the day and never got a contract extension that he deserved because he asked way too much. Uh, and, and it wasn't, how can you say that he wasn't worth it? Mm-hmm. It was because the organization couldn't afford to keep him. Yeah. And, and I think that's where the bucks were going. Well, what's our risk reward? You know, um, you know, I'm really happy, you know, Jameis is taking care of himself and, getting, you know, bettering himself, which the kid, 
let me tell you something. There's no harder worker than anybody I've ever seen in a Buccaneer uniform than Jameis Winston. That guy's just insane. So that desire to to be a champion, the work ethic, uh, eventually it all come to play, and he'll get there again. I just, like I said, I pray, I pray that one way or another he can just come back. You know, because we're only talking two years, man, and uh, and you're one injury away from starting again. So um, if he doesn't sign with another team, which I think somebody will smarten up and sign him, uh, boy, I, I would love to see the Bucks make an offer to keep him. I know it'd be a little bit odd, mm-hmm. but uh, I know I know a lot of Buck fans out there that love Jameis and uh, including myself, not just the football player, but the person and. Uh, It'd be neat. I just don't like seeing him uh, almost like outcasted. It, it doesn't make the team look right. Um, and I, I just think there's a lot of upside on that kid, too, still. So I wish him well. I hope he, uh, you know, we always have a, a saying, once a buck, always a buck. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, if he does leave us, hopefully one day we can get him back. Um, but, uh, you know, let's just hope these next two years are pretty special and uh, we can get a playoff berth and, uh, you know, what I call uh, be irrelevant again. You know, win, win a championship. That would be super. Yeah, man. Well, the relevancy is already returned. We've seen it. We touched on it earlier with the whole almost a debacle when it comes to the uh, <laughs> to the season tickets, man. I'm like, I'm so glad I renewed mine the week before. <laughs> yeah, because you know you ain't getting that increase. Man. That was, was the crazy. Are the people that had the season tickets didn't get an increase. It was the new people that got the increase. And, and I was like, what do you mean increase? You know, I remember that 250,000 waiting list uh, in the middle of a recession, and they increased it by 30%, and they wonder where that 250,000 went. Yeah. You know, so obviously the Bucks ain't going to ever make that mistake again. But, uh, but I will tell you this. I mean, the Buccaneer organization is first class. I mean, you got guys like Brian Ford, uh, the COO of the Bucks, that uh, he's not a phony. He's a real deal. This guy uh, will take care of you. Uh, you know, at first, when I first met him, I'm like, damn, he's always shaking hands, man. He's always talking to people. Yeah. Is this guy the real deal? And, uh, you know, after many years of knowing him and and uh, be actually becoming a friend of his now, he's a pretty good guy. And uh, he's great for the Buccaneer organization. And uh, I think they deserve it. The Buccane- all those ticket brokers, you know, as far as it, at Buccaneer headquarters, you know how tough it's been on those guys? <laughs> you know, think about it. And for those to get the, you know, come on now, for the for the, the ring, the ringing and saying, hey, I like to get season tickets. Well, what do you mean I can't get a lower level? Well, oh, my God. Are you serious? You can't get a lower level ticket? Oh, I don't care. Then give me a 50-yard line upper deck. I don't care. Just get in the game. You know, because uh, I got a good friend of mine, D's Bucks, and uh, familiar. Oh, he's the best, dude. That that guy is awesome. And one of the things is he don't even sit in the seat. He just gets a ticket and he goes into the concourse area, uh, not by the the ship, but the other area, and he's cheering the Bucks on right from there. That boy stands up the entire game. I go, man, you better be careful, brother. You ain't getting any younger, man. And I know it. <laughs> And you're wearing that latex mask. You know, I know it's hot. So, but uh, great person. Also another great friend. And uh, yeah, D's is something else, man. I'll tell you, you, you know, when when the big nasty finally retires and hangs it all up, it's nice to see there are some cool super fans out there uh, that can keep it going. Now, there are a lot, man. And, and, I, and I greatly appreciate those cats. Um, a lot of them are part of the, you know, what the buck crew and so forth. And I always see them at the Hall, only Hall of Fame tailgate in Florida, in Central Florida specifically. But, yeah, a lot of those cats do exist, man. And you've, again, have been, in my mind, for as long as I've known the Bucks, as long as I've been a Bucks fan, since 94, when Hardy Nickerson came on board, when I first got my glimpse of Hardy Nickerson, that's when I saw you. I saw you in the crowd, and I'm like, holy crap, like they've got their own human mascot. Like this guy, like every time I saw the Bucks, I related the Bucks with the guy in the rhino horn hat and the big face paint. And I'm like, yo, that cat is something else. Like I gotta, I gotta catch up with this cat. Like this, this is a bucks guy. Like he's gotta be like the mascot. You've been a face 
one of the faces of the Bucks, but definitely one of the more prominent faces, and you stayed. Yeah, you know, it all comes down to longevity, man. Like I told you, team loyalty and sticking around. You know, obviously, I can't do this forever. You know, there's a lot of them, uh, you know, you can label people face a franchise. I don't believe in that garbage. Um, and I don't believe in just having to get on TV all the time either. The main thing is, is what you're remembered as, you know, when you got kids coming up to you as adults telling you, Hey, I remember when you came to my school and you talked about drugs are nasty or, Hey, uh, you know, I remember meeting you with my dad and he's passed away now. And, and now, uh, you know, I got my kids that I'm bringing to the games and you were a big inspiration of coming to a Bucks game. You know, it's, you know, you look at it, you're looking at this rhino head guy that, you know, and you're going, what the heck is that? <laughs> and then you go, well, what is, what do I look at it as? I look at it. Remember that there's one person out there that's their first game. And my job is to make their game memorable whether we win or lose. And if it has to do with being nice, taking a photo and uh, saying some nice, kind words to somebody, how hard is that? Right. That's... And I wish every Buccaneer fan that considers themselves a face painter or a, you know, a nickname or whatever, I hope they do the same thing. Cause you know, when it's all said and done, you know, we're going to be dust and buried, but you know, your memory lives on. And, uh, you know, and that's something I'm really proud of. That's why we instill it in our families. And uh, I know a lot of super fans that are involved that do that now. And it's really refreshing to see. Uh, and they have their own ways of giving back. And that's that's refreshing as well. Um, but, you know, like I said, you ain't got to be a super fan. You ain't got to be a Hall of Fame fan. All you got to do is pewter and red till you're dead and make sure that you fill up the Tampa Stadium Tampa and Stadium. let Loud and proud together. Man, you couldn't say it any better. That's exactly why I've got the one and only Hall of Fame Bucks fan, NFL fan in the world. You. That's exactly why I wanted to speak to you, man. And you did not disappoint. And, and there's nothing else left for me to say other than thank you. Again, like I said, I've, since I've been a fan of the Bucks, I've been a fan of you. Not even knowing exactly who you were, but I was watching again, watching the games, Northeast Mississippi. We couldn't even get a lot of the Bucks games. We had to watch the ESPN. Um, we had to watch the highlights at the end of the day, the end of the week, whenever we can see it. But whenever I saw, whenever I saw that helmet in the stands and I saw that face paint, I'm like, "Yo, we in there? We in there? We, <laughs> there you we, it, it, some fans in the building again. I greatly appreciate you. And I thank you for your time, man. Before you, I let you go though. Are there any other charities or any of the other? Um, organizations, anything you want to speak on before you get out of here or any other message you have for any fans, anybody who's paying attention? Yeah, I think uh, the main thing is whether what charity you do, you know, I don't do any other special charities. I do many. Um, and we do the Drugs Are Nasty program where we go out to the local elementary schools. We're mostly doing it in Manatee County uh, during Red Ribbon Week. Uh, but yeah, if you ever uh, are interested in the drugs are nasty. If we can get you on the schedule, I'll be glad to do it. Um, you know, as far as it's all about educating kids about the dangers of drugs and saying no, walk away and telling somebody and uh, making sure we can keep the drug dealers away from our kids and our youth so they can be something special later on down the road. And that's what it's all about. If we can save one child from making a mistake, that's what it's about. Hey, well, I greatly, once again, thank you, man, for your time. Again, I, I can't thank you enough. This has been pretty much everything I could have ever asked for as far as having you on for a guest. That's why I let back. I sat back and just listened to you. I love listening to different perspectives. I love listening to other fans, especially knowledgeable fans like yourself. And uh, I want to thank you on behalf of myself and the rest of every other Bucks fan that took the time out to listen to you. Uh, anybody who's out there listening, guys, you have been listening to Outside Leverage with your host, Robert Green, and the only Hall of Fame NFL fan in the world. First, only, Big Nasty. God bless. Go Bucks, and uh, stay safe and healthy, my brother. I will do so, man. Thank you again. Appreciate you.